Hey everybody. What's up? Uh, we're back for some more movie times, and this time with the biggest, most loudest, most over the top uh, thing the Marvel Universe has ever done. Uh, also I was going to try and work in a joke about Stan Lee eclipsing uh, all of his other creators and them not getting any credits in the films, but uh, uh, I think other people have done that already, so we'll just say it's Avengers Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is the biggest opening that's ever happened, ever. Uh, in the history of ever, because you need to see it. You need to know what happened. Spoilers, the good guys win. I think we can't talk about this movie without just getting into spoilers. We really can't, so let's let's do a quick, uh, just do a quick overview, uh, like general thoughts and uh, recommendations for those who do not want spoilers. Uh, I don't know why you're listening to us talk about it, but the fuck ever. Uh, I didn't think it was as good as uh, Infinity War. Which is strange because one of the big things that I really liked about Infinity War was I didn't know where they were going next for this. And while this feels like a, a good enough conclusion, uh, it it feels very, very padded. At, at three hours, it, it, feels, it feels like there's a lot of fluff in a movie about trying to resurrect half the universe. Well... I'll say I I kind of disagree because it had enough curveballs to keep me going, and this from a guy who saw like six minutes of spoilers like two days before it came out. Mm. Um, but even those spoilers didn't spoil that much. Um, but I it had enough curveballs for me. Like I didn't see the story going in that particular direction, but. Given that Spider-Man and all these other movies were already confirmed, you could guess the ending. Yeah, at it, least it was, somewhat. It was pretty easy to guess uh, that like Spider-Man and everybody else is coming back. Even if you're, even if that wasn't, I I very much doubt that they were going to kill off Black Panther, which was one of their most successful. Uh, it was the uh, most, most successful individual movie. Yes, it was the most that. successful of their individual movies. Uh, and this laid into their uh, production cycle. Yeah. Uh, so, if you had half a brain, you knew that that was not going to remain the status quo. Uh, I think... I'll, I'll get further into this when we do spoilers. But I think it would have been more impactful if it weren't uh, these char a lot of these characters' last stands, mostly because we know their contracts are up. I knew if you had gotten extended, and that they were kind of kept it hush hush as to how far they got extended, but they they didn't keep the ones that you knew were getting uh, getting canceled hush hush because they were they were pretty evident about some of this, and it felt. Well, it felt less like RDJ and Chris Evans' contracts. RDJ had already extended his contract multiple times. Chris Evans, I think he hit his number or mm. won a few movies over. But yeah, it felt. Uh, I'll I'll get more into it later. But the the ending felt a little eh, just because that was more a prescient reminder rather than saying, "Oh yeah, this is a this is a good send off for these characters." Uh, overall, uh, I would say that this is this is honestly one I would probably catch a matinee for if you were if you were wanting to see it without spoilers. I, I would say yeah, go see it in the theater. It's a it's a darn good wrap up to almost almost a decade and a half of movies. Eleven years, man. Eleven years worth of movies. Eleven years worth of movies. And. I kind of look forward to seeing what they do for the next wave. I'll say that. I agree. Okay. So, uh, that's all for non-spoilers. I'd so, say catch a oh. showing when you can catch a showing, because let's be honest. Yeah. This motherfucker's been um, sold out for a while. Yeah. Uh, I have I have a working theory that I, I am cursed 
for watching these movies though, because I can I can never have a a decent movie watching experience. My theater was packed. It was opening night. So was mine at eleven o'clock in the morning. Jesus Christ. And that was the earliest showing I could get at my local theater, and I was like, you know what, I'll support a local theater, why not? Please tell me you went to Behind the Mall and not AMC. I did not, because I went to go see Shazam at Behind the Mall, which is another local theater I have, and while the movie was good, the theater experience sucked, uh, even though I was the only person in the theater. It was a small screen, it was poorly lit, everything everything just looked awful. Which... How I do think you keep she's having these bad experiences. I think should serve as a testament to Shazam being a really good movie that I recommended going to see that movie despite the fact that I had like a super shitty theater experience. I really don't and I decided, you know what, I'll go the other route and I'll go to my other local theater to see it's Endgame. And theater. it was eleven in the morning. Those chairs hurt so bad. They man. they have horrible tiny circus chairs. Uh, they haven't updated those chairs in 30 the years. The only one I could get was one that was like one row away from the front row and off to the very, very far edge of the left screen. And I was I was terrified at the beginning because there was this kid constantly going, Danny, what's going on? Oh, I want popcorn! I'm just like, I don't care really about these movies, but I really don't want to have to listen to a kid try and play catch up on a three hour fucking movie. Don't take your kids to see these things at 11 in the fucking morning! Oh my god. Anyway, uh. These movies were probably older than he is. <laughs> uh, probably. Probably. But yeah, I, I got to I got to play I got to have that. And the people who sat next to me uh, were constantly sprawling across both the seats they were in. Like, she was constantly draping her legs over her boyfriend, and I was just like, I'm trying to ignore you, but I have to sit like this to watch the movie. Yeah, I also kept having, this, I kept having this weird experience where every once in a great while, uh, like, part of the screen would just go green. Yeah, you definitely like, saw I don't, it I don't the know, theater. I don't know if I just had a weird hue saturation and something happened like that, or if we just had a weird projector problem, but... Yeah, it, it happened like that. Uh, I am cursed, then I have come to the acceptance that I will never truly have a good theater-going experience. And I can only pray that the movie that I watch it overcomes it. Okay. But so far, very few movies have done so. <laughs> well, that being said... Uh, that being said, fans. it's spoilers for Avengers Endgame from here on out. Um, I thought it was very, very... Uh, uh, interesting choice to bring the Dark Phoenix in at the last moment and wipe everyone out. Uh, Wolverine uh, running up and uh, uh, forcing his claws into uh, into uh, Captain Marvel's uh, face while screaming and ranting about the patriarchy while Thanos uh, just kind of backs off Homer Simpson style into the shade. That did not happen. <laughs> uh, Really gotta teach you to roll with a joke. Anyway. That contract was bought way too late to put any of that in the movie. <laughs> I don't know. They kind of introduced a whole shit ton of stuff happening late in the game. Okay, so the, uh, this movie, as we said, everybody comes back to life in pretty much the only way that they can, which so, is through time travel. I, I knew time travel was going to happen. I did not expect them to go and immediately kill Thanos, then a five-year time jump. See, I was okay with that. Then, well, I knew I knew it as soon as I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp. At the end, they talk about time jumps and stuff like that. Uh, and I was like, that's how they're going to beat Thanos. I didn't pay attention to the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp because Ant-Man and the Wasp was just a stupid-ass movie that I didn't give a shit about. Um... You I, are always hating on Ant Man. Like, uh, all right, uh, but again, it's the problem that the character never acts the way everyone tells you they're supposed to be. Like uh, all through Ant Man, they keep telling you you're you're bad man, Scott Lang. You need to change your mean way, your wicked ways. But you never actually see him be bad, Scott Lang. He's always nice guy, Paul Rudd. <laughs> he, he's a good dad. He helps his he helps his family out. And it's it's kind of the same in there. That's it's, the Scott Lang story. He's a good guy that makes bad 
a bad decision, but he's really a good guy. But all throughout the movie, they're like, you need to improve your ways. It's like, the fuck is he supposed to do? He's doing everything perfect. Just shut up. Fuck off. Uh, anyway. Anyway. He um, comes out of the quantum realm. He comes out later. of the quantum realm five years later. Uh, for him, it was like five minutes, he said? Five hours? Five hours. Yeah. So, I knew that immediately Iron Man was mega spoiler going to die because yeah it was it was pretty it was pretty obvious um, he had the best life out of all of them like his life was great he had a kid <laughs> it was kind of, it was kind of the reverse hawkeye scenario <laughs> yeah yeah hawkeye had a shitty life uh, after the snap because he lost everything now that being said this movie does open up in a way i didn't expect where uh, it tries to remind me that paul rudd was a th or not paul rudd but uh jeremy, jeremy renner, renner was a thing yeah and i was like oh that's right jeremy renner's in these movies and his family immediately gets <laughs> dusted like jesus like i want I want to see so much it's, though. It's so it's, his five years. His it's I don't I don't care. It's so obvious though. Like immediately when it starts up, it might as well have had like his wife saying, "Oh, honey, good news! I'm only a week towards retirement, and the farm is almost paid off." Well, from the previews, you knew it was gonna be dark because he had that whole yep. my family dark. got dusted. Yeah. Um, well, he went on a fucking murdering spree because he became Ronan. Yeah, which I kind of wish they had spent a little more time with. Right. I, which I think they could have cut out some of the... Like, this movie, you could cut out half of this movie. and Ronan you could is easily, one of my favorite Hawkeye arcs, though. I love that arc. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. You could easily cut out uh, 30 minutes from this movie, and you could tighten up some things other places, and you could squeeze a bit more... Uh, character development in for him. I really wanted to see his full Ronin costume at least like you, once. Like you he could pulls have, that that fucking mask. Captain off. Marvel is once again completely pointless in this movie. Uh, they... Like she serves no purpose that someone else could not fulfill, and you could then devote that extra time, that like two or three minutes that they have with her on screen to somebody else. They basically utilized her in the first five minutes to show Literally, they go and kill Thanos within the first 15 minutes, and they go to show that Captain Marvel could have done this all by herself if she had have been there in Infinity War. Pretty much. Uh, that's Well, they do that, and then later in the movie when they fight Thanos again... She shows up and... She shows up and kind of gets her ass kicked? She holds her own. Yeah, for, until she doesn't. It, it's 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 that was it's all the Superman to comic. Give. It's the Superman comic problem where he's, he's stronger. It it's the problem with they have with Superman in some of the comics where he's as strong as they need him to be in certain comics, and there are other points where he like can get beat up by a three year old, <laughs> and it's like I don't know what your what your deal is. And uh, while I'm glad that they took her powers down a little bit so that it kind of flows better. They also needed her to save Iron Man from space. But again, that's I feel like that could have been the same thing could have been accomplished by an intergalactic tow truck. <laughs> that's technically what she was. <laughs> I, I'm just saying Or not damaging the engine. <laughs> also, this could have been done, yes. Uh, there there were multiple uh ways around this to where they would have had more time to uh, work on her and develop her as a character I because just, I think it would have been very interesting if she was one of the people who did end up getting uh, turned to dust in the snap and then they have to figure out oh shit what do we do now well no one knew about her except Nick Fury who was also dusted which again just kind of like let's just throw another person in there why not so, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from, but I see why she was there in the first place. Um, the whole, how do you feel about, though, some of the things they did skip over very fast. Um, Banner's now in control of the Hulk. Right. And Tony see, Stark figures time travel out in this roughly was one of my ten minutes. Biggest pet peeves! 
He figures time travel out on accident after spending his entire day telling Captain America and his buddies, like, can't do time travel, can't do, uh, nope, can't do time travel. It's not, he figures it's not out feasible. in roughly ten minutes. He figures it out in ten minutes! By accident, he's just like, uh, do the thing and, uh, see what that happens. Holy shit. No, oh, I've done it. Like, Holy shit. And I, I was sitting there in the theater. I'm like, I overlooked you figuring out nanobots that had never come up in the movies before. Uh, to where you could just have a suit of armor, faceplate included, that gloops all over you and reshifts to make more lasers for you to fire. I overlooked that and I said, what the fuck ever, that's fucking dumb. But whatever, uh, it, movie, I understand that. Iron Man 3, you need a reason to have the little chess piece because Iron Man 3 continues to butt fuck every continuity uh, going forward with you. So that's the reason for that. Time travel, though? No! Fucking no! He figures that job will happen roughly 10 minutes on accident. It's it's not even 10 minutes. It's, it, it, it is less than two. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> and that was the point where I was just like, fuck. <laughs> but then they go and immediately time travel. <laughs> they, they then go and immediately time travel. Uh... Create possibly at least two alternate realities. Which, here's the problem. They explain their time travel logic, which is something you never, ever do because you always end up breaking your time travel logic. Uh, the they, only movie that I've really seen that does not do this is Primer. And Primer is a hell of a movie. So they basically use Dragon Ball Z time travel logic in this one. The, okay, well, let's let's start let's start at the beginning of this because they use a combination of pim particles and uh, the quantum universe to time travel. Yes, and there are certain nexus points where they could go to where the Infinity Stones would be located in various spots. Because they're doing this because we did gloss over this. Thanos used the gauntlet a second time to snap the th stones out of existence. So the snap couldn't be undone. Right, which is one of those things I'm like, you figure there'd be some kind of a way around that, like, kind of like how you, a, a genie can't, you can't wish for infinite wishes. Yeah. Like, you figure there would be a way to, like, you can't undo the super stones that can do anything. But I, I was like, whatever, they're magic space rocks. Fuck it. I'll, yeah. I'll work with it. So they, they disperse to create they, they have to do a time heist, as it's called. And this is, some, this is something that kind of bothered me when they said they only have a finite amount. But they could go back to a point in time where they would not have a finite amount, grab more of what they would need, and then they could keep doing what they would need to do. Yes. <laughs> so you don't actually have a finite amount. And they even say... That no matter what they do in that universe, it would not affect their timeline. It would only create another timeline. Like I said, Dragon Ball Z time travel rules, yes. And and so they don't they don't use that logic later, like uh, like at the very very end when uh, they no, no, I have a theory for that. No, hold I'll on, hold it. on. They they very clearly state this. When at the very end of the movie, spoiler, they fight Thanos and win again. Whoopee. Uh, they decided to put all the stones back in their proper points in time so that they would close off all the different universes that they would make, even though that no longer actually makes sense for a couple of them. No, there's actually one alternate universe guaranteed made because Loki got away. Yes. There's a couple others, but that's beside the point. But Captain America goes back and puts the stones back, and they're supposed to, he was supposed to be back in like five seconds their time, and nothing happens. And nothing happens. And then they look over at a bench across the way, which at first I was kind of okay with this, because like, all right, this caps this caps off Cap's uh, story, and it's fine. But then it's revealed that he decided to stay in 1950-whatever with Peggy and kind of live life. Except he can't then be back in his old timeline, because that creates a new timeline which splinters off in its own reality. Here's here's my thought on that. So the whole time they have talked about Peggy Carter, they have never talked about a like they said she was married. They did not talk about who her husband was. 
And because Captain America was in the ice, technically, him going back in time and being there could have already been part of the timeline. He could have lived his life with Peggy Carter, and when she died, he just popped forward a few years. He could have lived his complete life with Peggy. Which would not have happened because he didn't come back on the platform. If he popped back in time, he would have appeared back on the platform, remember? He was sitting on a stone bench by the lake, which means he got there at some point before he time traveled and sat down at that bench and no one noticed. Eh. I, I, I see where they went with it, though, and I I understand it, where it's, it's one of those things. I, I would rather have them have had no rules with time travel and just said, we don't know what's going to happen. We think we know what's going to happen. But they said very definitely, this is how this will work. And then they broke how this will work. And they didn't follow those rules. And I was like, oh, eat I a can dick. see it breaking, but I can also see how they could have just done it because they could have said that is part of what happened. Because they never really established who Peggy Carter married. Yeah. And it could have been he did all his stuff as Captain America and he's still in the ice, so he would still come out and do all his Captain America stuff. And then at that point in age, she just went back in time and lived life with Peggy Carter. So what about Sharon Carter? Is she just... They kind of just said, fuck fuck you. Like, I I don't know if the actress wouldn't renew her contract or what. But they basically said, fuck you. Who was it? Emily? I I don't know. know. But yeah, they basically told her, yeah, uh, eat a dick. You're not part of this anymore. Even though that's who Steve Rogers marries in the comics. And also... What kind of grinded my gears about this is... uh Don't really grind your gears, Jared. The super soldier serum keeps him young for a very long time. Yes. So and somehow he him, looks like normal Clint Eastwood in our time. <laughs> like, even that, he would appear maybe roughly 10 years older. Not an old man. Are you, are you saying that they didn't have to use Chris Evans' stunt double uh, in old man makeup? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm... (laughs) Like, it just... That kind of... I'm just like, that doesn't follow their time travel rules. Speaking speaking of... No, that doesn't follow the Super Soldier Serum rules, but it's the movie universe. Speaking of bad makeup jobs, am I the only one who is disappointed with with Thor's uh, fat suit? I just thought Thor... Fat Thor was funny, so... That's fine, but it's the same Thor... Funny Thor we've had since... Ragnarok, oh, which has been good. Thank God. That being said, Ragnarok. it just looked like uh, Chris Hemsworth in a fat suit because they didn't do anything to his face, which uh, I don't know if you've uh, ever looked at somebody who's kind of puffy, kind of bulgy right here. Sean, I've, I've lost and gained weight. I know how that and, looks. And you got that, you got that fat guy face? Yeah, I, I kind of have the jowls and all that. I know what it's like to have skinny face and chubbier face. Yes, I'm aware. Yeah, we'll say that. Uh, but yeah, and he doesn't have that. He just has regular cut Chris Hemsworth face. <laughs> they they cover it with the beard and the hair. But again, he does. It still looks like cut Chris Hemsworth. He's a god. God but logic. If, but if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna do that logic, why does he have to get fat and chubby at all? Because they needed him to be... Because it's funny for him to walk around with fat-ass man titties? And act like the dude, yeah. Uh, that being said, I, I did kind of like uh, the way Chris Hemsworth played him off while being comedic. At the same time, you could very much understand that it's uh, somebody who's been through a rather traumatic event. Yeah. And he's just kind of... It's like his only method of coping. I did enjoy the, the time travel scene with his mother. It, it gave... It gave wonderful closure to everyone who needed it. Uh, the only character who kind of curveballed me that I didn't see coming was Black Widow. Okay, let's talk about that. So, when everybody's off retrieving various Infinity Stones throughout time so they can undo Thanos' snap, uh, this is like one of the big portions of the movie that bothered me, and I don't think they ever really, they could have really gotten away with not having a bad guy for this portion and I think it would have been a much more interesting film uh, with them just kind of dealing with the logic and the uh, uh, time that they're in trying to undo 
the Thanos snap, which I'm honestly was really, really happy with how they did that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, they, they set it out to where Nebula and War Machine go after the power soul, stone. the power stone and get it from, uh, from Chris Pratt. And well, they don't get it from him. They get it from the place he got it from. They knock him they out. They knock him out and take it from the place he was going to. Uh, and they send uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye off to get the Soul Stone. Yes. And the Soul Stone has a very specific mandate that you sacrifice something. Yep. So... Killing yourself really isn't somebody else sacrificing something. It's just you killing yourself. Now, if it had just been, uh, if it had just been someone has to die for this, I think it would have been really, really uh, a much better subversive maneuver if they killed Red Skull and threw him over the cliff. Yeah, yeah, that would have been and, great. And they could have gotten around that, but instead, one of them had to die, and I was like. Well, I know Scarlett Johansson's contract isn't up for renewal, so I think it's going to be her. She's supposed to have a movie, though. Is she? They've been talking about a Black Widow movie. That's well, they've been talking why about that I, for years now. That's why I didn't see that one coming, is because I thought she had a movie coming out. But they could just turn and do what they're doing with uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch, who Vision didn't come back. Vision didn't come back. They're predating it before Infinity War, so it entirely could be possible. Predated entirely possible. Black Widow, but also that they brought fucking Gamora back. <laughs> um, well, that is a Gamora from another timeline, exactly. That sticks around. Um, so there's another alternate timeline. There's another alternate timeline because um, Thanos did not go back to that timeline either. No, no, he is uh, he is very thoroughly dead. Uh, that being said, uh, as far as everyone else went, I thought that theirs went mm, pretty darn well, with the exception of using the Pym Particles and them saying, we only have a finite amount to do this in, but then they realize, oh, we can go back a little further and have more than enough to do because what we Because they need knew to do. where the Tesseract and Hank Pym would be in the same place at the same time. Right. And so that, that kind of creates one of that, those, that gives see, that. you've already broken that. That gives them the the little nod, though, so Steve could go back and realize... They did that whole scene so Steve could go back and realize he really misses Peggy at that point. And also to give Tony that moment with his father and to show us Jarvis, which is the only... On screen. Only on screen appearance of a Marvel TV character. Yes. That only appeared on TV and not in the movies. Yes. Because Peggy Carter did have her own show, but she was in the movies first. So, Which, is it just me, or did, uh... Who, who was Anthony Stark in Captain America, Dominic? It was, it was, uh, the Tony Stark, or the Anthony... Not Anthony, Howard. Howard Stark. It was the Howard Stark from Iron Man 2, not the Howard Stark from Captain America. That was this Howard Stark. But they really should have had it be the Howard Stark from Captain America, not the Howard Stark from uh, Iron Man 2. I think the time difference was... Cause, I'm just saying... Because uh, this was set in the 70s, and what was Agent Carter set in? Like the 50s? Something like that. So... I don't know. Haley Atwell didn't look like she had that much aging. Like, they're just... The aging of, of Howard Stark is kind of weird. I he went downhill that. fast. We'll say that. Yeah. But, yes, they, they had Jarvis in there. Fortunately, which, his son inherited... I'm guessing his son inherited his mother's uh, 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 youth genes. Something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to talk about? So, uh... We got through Black Widow, and yeah, we got through Black Widow, who and the Nebula throws herself off. The Nebula swap. <laughs> oh my God, this was this was the point where I was like, oh God, they're gonna. This, do this. was the one kind of pet. This was my pet peeve. It's like, okay, just because two things are in the same place at the same time, I didn't now have, we're running on time cop logic. I didn't have a problem with that because this was actually a fairly interesting idea 
uh, like, what if uh, the, to... Their memories sank up, even though... No, they run off of the same, uh, like, spatial relations processor, I guess. And so, if you have two things that are supposed to be interconnected like that, she they would seeing... connect with each other, and they'd be like, oh, God. No, the problem happens I that don't... she didn't immediately just go... And then go back and tell everybody, oh, by the way, Thanos knows what we're doing, but it doesn't matter because that's in the timeline. Right, and I don't see how, like, that thing in her head stopped something else from working. Well, it, like, froze up her entire body. But she hit her thing, and it stopped it. I don't, I don't know about that. Like, I, th I, I remember her going for the thing and hitting it, and it stopped it. See, I, I thought that that was her just freezing at the very last second. Like, it's just before everything got hit, and she's just kind of froze up like that. And then she I don't know. she comes at him and she's like, oh, God, if it was that, uh, for whatever reason, it stopped the particles from activating, that was never really explained, or it was poorly conveyed. And we, uh, we could just toss that onto the pile of shit that makes no goddamn sense in this movie. Uh, also, how did she transport Thanos' ship without them parking? Uh, movie needs to happen, so shut your fucking face. I don't know. And that's that's kind of the big problem that I have with the ending. Uh, the yeah. ending fight scene is great because of how absolutely dour and depressing the first part of this movie is. And so... Uh, you have a lot of moments in that fight scene. You got you got a lot of really great moments in the fight scene at the very end. What which was is, your favorite part? Uh... Probably my favorite part was when uh, Captain America started wailing on Thanos with Molnir. Ah, we have the same favorite moment. <laughs> yes, that was that was something that I was like, all right, that's a really great callback. Yes, because this movie, this movie very easily could have been uh, like when we first went into it, and I heard time travel is the way we're gonna make everything happen. We're gonna go back to uh, all these points in our in our timeline. That I was like, oh god, it's gonna be clip show the movie. Uh, which fortunately it didn't really turn out to be the, like the closest they get is like when they go back to the time of the first Avengers, yeah. And Cap fights himself. Uh, he gets into the elevator with all the Hydra guys, and he's like, "I don't know if I really need to beat the shit out of all these guys and mess up time too much for everybody, so I'll just kind of lie and be like, I know what's going on, guys. Let me take that. Okay." And the he was, fact he, he was tricked, smart about it. The fact Captain America tricked all these people to think he was a Hydra agent, though. It, it was also a very subtle dig at the uh, comic book uh, issue uh, that came out. With him, don't talk about that. With the oh, Infinity was, Cube shit. You mean the Cosmic Cube? Cosmic Cube, yeah. Yeah. Where Red Skull changed the timeline and Captain America was a Hydra date. Yeah, and I thought, I thought that was a nice, clever dig at uh, the comics mm -hmm. and a really, really stupid uh, one like that. Uh, but yeah, I, it actually turned out to be uh, pretty decent uh, how they went through and reestablished everything and they didn't really go through and show all their big stuff that they were doing. Like, the closest you get is maybe maybe 30 seconds of Avengers 1. Yeah. Where you where you've got a you got the Manhattan fight happening and uh, Banner Hulk goes to talk to the Great Old One, or the Ancient One. Yeah, and it took her, it took him saying that Stephen Strange was the one who gave up the time stone for her to be like, oh, well, he must have done it for a reason. Here, take this. Like, yeah, that scenario resolves very, very uh, uh, serendipitously, we'll say. It's like, well, you could do the same thing. with that. And, uh, you could do the same thing and see 14 million outcomes that apparently there's only one where they win. It just takes five year time skip and it's time heist. Yeah. And... Oh, excuse me. That was that was one of, again one of those things that was really irked me. I was just like, oh fuck! You could have cut this, and, and it would have been just 
equally as valid. The, the second he shows up and all the portals start opening was pretty fucking epic, though. That was really cool. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and you even get. Your I like little... the I like the way it starts up with the with the microphone crackling uh, with uh, Falcon saying on your left. Yeah. Which is a nice little uh, nice little thing that Cap's gonna know and he's gonna be like, all right, this is how it's gonna happen. Uh. Well, before we do that, before we talk about the very end fight, uh, the fight to end all fights, uh, I I do want to give this movie credit that it, the reversing of the snap was probably my favorite scene in this entire movie. And there were a lot of really good scenes in this movie, uh, just because of how quiet and subtle it is. Scott Lang uh, goes outside, goes to a window and he sees birds uh <laughs> Flitting about, uh, a phone rings and it's Hawkeye's wife on the other end of the line, and I get reminded. All oh, right, Jeremy Renner's an actor, <laughs> <laughs> not just not just background dressing that occasionally mopes. Uh, and and you kind of see. Oh, okay, so it it was undone, and it would have been really easy to have this big uh, thing happen where everybody just like spontaneously reappears. And they all flood the no, streets. No, that was that was great that they didn't do that. It, it was it was wonderful, and I was like, "Good on you." It was nice. It was quiet, and it served its absolute best purpose. Um, and then, then the final <laughs> then shit went to hell, and then everything just went went to shit. Although that being said, why did they have to go find Peter Dinklage? At the first point to get the infinity about the infinity stone gauntlet form because apparently you could just do it with any old glove because Tony Stark makes one. Uh, well they they were looking for Peter Dinklage to make Stormbreaker. Right, but why did Thanos need Peter Dinklage, and why didn't they need Peter Dinklage this time? Is it because he was off filming Game of Thrones, and they just said, eh, maybe we don't need Peter Dinklage right now. Um, I think because Thanos needed a gauntlet, but Stark Tech is awesome. I don't know. So are we saying that Stark Tech is on par with a giant dwarf uh, that it forges uh, magnificent things in the heart of a dying star? Sure. Let's <laughs> go with that. Nanotech, it can do anything. Yeah, sure. Why not? Fuck me. <laughs> Because Peter Dinklage was shooting Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Just, uh, yeah, that, that's why we didn't need to go find that guy again. Um, so, yeah. It, Game of Thrones, spoiler. Tony was the only Stark that died this weekend. <laughs> I, I, wish I, could, I wish I could muster up energy to try and pretend to be mad about that, but I stopped caring about Game of Thrones a long time ago. I remember the last time you cared about Game of Thrones, Sean. I remember. I, w I was very, very invested for the first couple of seasons, and then I just I fell off for a little bit, and I came back, and I was like, I don't need this. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about, but okay. Hmm? That's not what I was talking about, but okay. Oh? I was talking about that time you kept getting harassing calls because I did something on the Wi-Fi and not Game of Thrones. Oh, yes. That's true. <laughs> that too. That, that, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> I didn't so much care about Game of Thrones as I cared about... Uh, well, we won't get into that. Yep. Anyway. Because <laughs> we don't support that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, one of us doesn't. Anyway. Uh, and so we reached the climax. The very end. A fight to end all fights. Where everyone fights Thanos again. Which, in the first movie, it's built up that Thanos is this super powerful individual but he then walks through everybody and it's kind of like it's kind of because he has the stone the infinity stones yeah that empower him but then he just beats the ever-loving shit out of everybody anyway and it's just like why what i thought thanos was strong because he had the other stuff but it turns out thanos was just as strong the man did decimate planets before he had the Infinity Stones. Well, I'm assuming he didn't do that single-handedly, though. Here he's fighting Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, uh, Captain Marvel, and he basically gets taken on by everybody. 
and well, he just yeah, continuously he beats his, the living uh, shit out of everyone else. He summons his whole fucking army. Which is all just background noise. Which, am I the only one who, when he did this and all his generals came pouring out, I was just like, oh god, this again. Uh, it, was such a, it was such a horrible CGI video game fight last time. This happened, and I was like, oh, God, we're going to have this again, and it's going to be an hour, which the movie, this was an hour-long fight scene, but it was somehow way more engaging than uh, episode three's uh, fight in the lava, <laughs> where, where it went on for 45 minutes, and after 30 seconds, I didn't give a shit. They managed to, uh, they managed to uh, keep it pepped up by catting over all the individual characters that had come back and be like, oh, okay, so this is what other people are doing while the main heroes are fighting the big bad guy. Well, there was the big game of keep away with the gauntlet. Yes. And then... Where was... it would have been horribly advantageous for somebody with cosmic powers to take it and fly into the atmosphere where they no longer have a starship to go. And that would have kept it away from Thanos. They could have just said... Here, if you don't hear from us in like like twelve hours, just take this and do whatever with it. I want to know why they were trying to to get it to Ant Man to throw into the quantum realm. Because in theory, I think supposedly he was gonna take the stones back through time and put them back, and then he would be back five seconds later or whatever. Yeah, but he didn't have the right portal. He just had the little van, like... <laughs> he didn't have the red portal, I'm just saying. <laughs> do you want a movie to happen, or do you want it to happen? Well, happen? Well, that's up. not what happened anyway. Yeah. Uh, it ended up, uh, Thanos got the gauntlet, but then Tony stole the stones, and... Which uh, I'd love to know how he did that. Like, I thought they were all kind of locked in there uh, in, a, in, a, in a little lock. Like, so, even Thanos had a bit of a difficulty pulling the Power Stone out and smashing, uh, using it to smash Captain Marvel. Uh, I guess because it was Stark Tech, and Stark Tech's awesome, and crawls to other Stark Tech. So, basically, shut Nanob the fuck up if you want a movie. Nanobot rules. Nanobot rules. Nanobots. Nanomachines? Nanobots! Nanomachines! <laughs> God, it's Metal Gear Solid 4 all over again. Nano machines, Nano machines, Nano machines. And you know, uh, you did get your whole girl power moment there. Yes. For a second, because you had all the female superheroes. Which I thought every single one of them, besides Captain Marvel, had way more character development than she did. I will say this Scarlet Witch kicked some ass. Oh, I was so happy when she started going to town on him. I was just like, yes, chaos magics! Yeah, she was like, you took everything from me. He's like, I don't even know who you are. She's like, oh, you little motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> You're about to die. It, it was it was the more badass version of Chun-Li meeting M. Bison in Street Fighter the movie. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was, dude, I, I was, I'm so disappointed that her show is going to be a prequel because I just want to see like where she is after Infinity or after Endgame. You know what I wanted? I wanted that show to be a suburban sitcom with her and Vision, where Vision's in his little sweater vests and slacks. We are probably going to get that. <laughs> no, we're not, because Vision's dead. No, it's pre-Infinity War, so that's what we're getting, I'm telling you. The show is called WandaVision. I shit you not. That is the worst title I've ever heard in my life, and I'm kind of intrigued now. <laughs> Found in glory. The only more, vision. The only more useless show than that is gonna be fucking Pennyworth on Stars about Alfred before he meets fucking Bruce Wayne. Go. Tell us how you really feel here, Jared. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, it all wraps show. up. Tony Stark uh, snaps his, gets the Infinity Stones, and snaps all of Thanos's. Uh, Minions out of existence. And says he's Iron Man. And proclaims he is Iron Man. For the last time. Yes, and then he's he dead. Gets, he gets it. Well, he gets his farewells with Peter and War Which, Machine and Pepper. I, I know I shouldn't feel super, uh, super, uh, super, uh, what's, what's so sympathetic, I guess, 
towards uh, the woman who has told people to shove jade eggs into their vagina, even though that's horribly dangerous. But at the same time, it's kind of a testament to Gwyneth Paltrow actually being a damn good actress, because <laughs> I actually felt sympathy for her. I was like, I, I almost cried when she when she got there, which it was also really cool to see her in her iron, iron armor. Uh, her rescue uh, armor? Yeah, and rescue armor blasting. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm yep. sorry that it took uh, that many movies. That many movies to get well, that to happen. And this shitty is Iron also uh, goodbye, Gwyneth Paltrow, because her contract's done. She's she's going away. Which uh, I, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But yeah, it, they actually have a nice little send off for him. Uh, they have. Do you think they actually got everybody on on one set for that? Uh, for Tony Stark's funeral? Or do you think everybody was just there in green screen? No, I think they probably got everybody on set. I don't know, because uh, you got uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm hoping you, you got... ask a question because I know the answer. No, I know who the kid was. Ah! No, I that, that was... There's this random kid standing there. It's like, who the fuck? Oh, right, Iron Man 3. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's the kid from Iron Man 3. That's supposed to be the kid from Iron Man 3. I had to Google who it was. It, it serves no purpose! I had to Google who he was. I, um, I sat there, I was like, I was stunned for just half a minute. I'm like, who the fuck is this random kid? Oh, right, Iron Man 3 had a random kid. Fuck, that's the kid from Iron Man 3. I try to put that movie out of my memory. A so. lot of people try to put that movie out of their memory, but unfortunately... Uh, it's uh, like a sore spot. Yeah. Which I was actually really happy in this, because when Tony Stark first gets back, I was, uh, one of my first reactions was like, why is he still wearing the little thing on his chest, even though like you clearly see the iron suit super damaged and not usable, so I don't think his nanomachines are going to help him survive the cold, dark of space that he's about to slip off into oblivion to? Uh -uh. So uh, he doesn't need it to stay alive, and then when he gets to Earth, he rips it off his chest and slams it in Captain America's hands and is like, fuck you, I'm out. And I was just like, yeah, all right, there we go. <laughs> good good to see that didn't uh, need to stay in. And then he's wearing it again later. Yeah. Which didn't make a lick of sense. So there's... But Tony Stark dies, and it's super he, emotional. He wipes out. So here's my question. With his snap, did he just wipe out everything of all of Thanos' people? Or... Did he just send them back in time and dust them away into time? I don't care. Well, it leaves the question of other Gamora. Because according to Soulstone logic, she's dead and can't be brought back. Right. But her being from a different timeline, she could then exist. And they never really clarify if she went away back in time or if she just did no out. but that's something they can explore in other guardians that's of the galaxy movies that you mean as guardians of the galaxy mm -hmm. i'm so excited for thor joining them now honestly that's that's like the only one that i'm really looking forward to in phase 49 or whatever we're in now Four. whatever and uh because the guardians of the galaxy movies those are some standout movies like I know you're I not really a fan like of two. What I, I, it's not that I don't like two. It's just two was more. I guess I was with a a movie that's so good like Guardians one. Just well, the, I went, two underwhelmed me, but it's also because I am an actual Guardians fan. Well, Guardians the Galaxy one was going to be a hard up, movie to follow up no matter yeah, what they did. Well, they messed up a lot of stuff, and that just kind well, of hurts me with Star Wars dad and they've stuff. They've but... clearly gone through a different route where the yeah. comics and the movies are their own separate entity. And I understand like, that. Whatever. It's just it kind of that's what that's was my pet right. With it. Uh, going back and watching it a little again with a little more context for uh, some other people who have stronger emotional connections to it. Like there are a lot of people who identified real hard with uh, uh, Star Lord. Uh, identifying more with uh, Yondu than Ego. Yondu than Ego. Uh, like for people who had bad relationships with their father or who lost their father and basically they became a different person and they have this more idealized version in their head or 
uh, they came to realize that this was not the same person they knew. Yeah. And I, I could very much be like, you know, I, I understand that a lot more. I went into that, I went into that movie rewatching it with that kind of context and coding, and I was like, this is actually a very, very good movie. Yeah. I just, that, um, I am looking forward to a lot of things James got. James Gunn has coming up, though. Oh, yeah. Brightburn looks amazing. Dude, I'm stoked for Brightburn. Like, Really? Oh. Because it just looks like generic creepy kid with superpowers movie. It's Superman if he was beaten up and bullied. Oh, it's obviously, it's Superman. It's basically an Ultraman story, like Superman from Earth 3. But that's, like, the least interesting version of Superman, because that's the version everybody says Superman ought to be. Evil? Yeah, because he's got all that power. It'd go to his head. Well, I mean, I can see if the little kid was bullied in our day and age, yeah, he's gonna lose his shit and kill everyone. But again, I find that to be the least interesting version of Superman. The more interesting version is how he emotionally picks himself up and goes forward with that. Without becoming, I'm, uh, I'm interested evil to man. see what James Gunn does. With it. I'm assuming James Gunn will make a good movie with it, but we're not talking about that right now. We are wrapping up uh, Avengers Endgame, which had more fucking endings than the Lord of the Goddamn Rings, uh, and I wanted so bad just to leave that by the time the end credits finally rolled around, I just said, "Oh, thank God." There was a there was a nice little nod to uh, the movie that started everything. With uh, John Favreau and the little girl who yes. played Tony Stark's daughter. Yeah. Where he was like, do you want anything? And she's like, a cheeseburger. And he's like, I'll get you all the cheeseburgers. Okay. Uh, That's a callback we, to... Yeah, it's a callback to Iron Man 1. We right. really need to discuss that little kid because she was very obviously hired because she was cute. <laughs> not because she could act. <laughs> Which, I hate being down on kid actors, because it's really up to She's the director. What four again? This is uh, down to the director or directors in this case. But at some point, you could, you really should have said this kid really can't act. Because I've seen kids that age do really good acting. They needed her for three scenes. I can get over a kid actor. Unfortunately, there's some of the key. One of the big scenes she's in is where she has to be emotional, and she's just like. I'm bored. But the only thing that went through my mind when they did that wasn't, oh, that's a nice sweet little callback, was, wow, I wish I had more daddies that I like this. I could have infinite ponies. That's terrible. It is, but that's the only thing that went through my head because she didn't, she didn't sell me on that scene. I'm sorry, young child. Your director should have, uh, should have said, should have said something. So... After this, I know we are getting a couple of TV shows. Well, let's let's talk then, about this because this is, this is where I'm curious about what's going to happen because well, we this have is, our, this is kind of like them it would be like them trying to put lightning back in the bottle because you really can't go back to the smaller personal stories or it it'll be difficult to do that after you've had Thanos kill half the galaxy and bring it back. Well, so... I, you can keep doing that with, like, the individual movies, but I don't think you'll be able to do another Avengers-style movie now that you've set the bar this high. Well, so, movie-wise, we have, I believe, three confirmed movies, maybe four. TV show-wise, um, you have WandaVision, which is <laughs> a free... Infinity War. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, which may now be Captain America Winter Soldier, because Steve did pass on the mantle to Falcon. Yes. Which I thought I thought that was kind of weird because it could have been Bucky too, and it was Bucky first in the comics. But I get where he was going. Yeah. I think Sam needed it more than more oh, than yeah. Bucky. So you're having that. Um, there's a Hawkeye TV show in the works. Okay. And so those are the three TV shows. And then movie-wise, you have Spider-Man Far From Home, mm -hmm. uh, which I hope they explain. 
I guess his whole class was victims of the snap. I I don't know. Not age. I don't. I don't know. I. Uh, this is something I, that concerned I, me that they'll never talk about in any movie I know. But I want there to be a line, the, to be something where they like have, uh, like people talking about my significant other died in the snap and then came back. And but it's five years later and I moved on. Yeah. Exactly. I would like them to it, touch it, it on that. It would be like a Jerry Springer episode or yeah. something. And then we have Guardians 3, which is probably going to deal with Star-Lord trying to find the other Gamora. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Star-Lord needs Poon. Also, uh, I think they're putting Thor with them mm -hmm. to kind of even the playing out because Adam Warlock's supposed to show up at some point. Yeah. So they kind of need somebody to even out because Adam Warlock's pretty OP as far as character. He's one of the characters who can wield the Infinity Gauntlet. So. Well, apparently anybody can. Without any you. damage happening to him. Uh. Let me clarify. Without any side effects, <laughs> he can wield the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, and then you have, well, supposedly there was supposed to be a Black Widow movie, which we don't know if that's going to happen now, but it very well could be a prequel. Um, and there is also Black Panther 2. Oh. Oh, TV show-wise, there's also a Loki TV show confirmed. Interesting. But Loki will probably be Loki in the alternate timeline. Unless he, he somehow, being Loki, hops and skips around and ends up in the main timeline, which I would not be surprised if that happened. Um, I wouldn't. Or he not be dead again. So, Who the fuck knows? Long, uh, with all that wrapped up, uh... I, I think this know. is a perfectly fine send off to everything and a decent enough way to cap off uh, 10 plus years of movies. Uh, that being said, yeah, I still say you could have trimmed about 30 minutes out of this movie. I don't know how they're going to. I don't uh, see another Avengers movie possible after this. I mean. Oh, something will come up. Uh, the, I. You, Let's you focus. would have to do let's, something... Let's focus on this movie for now. You I have to do grand scale for... Again, let's focus on this movie right now. We'll worry about other Avengers movies as they come. Uh, I'm just scared they're going to go Secret Wars route. And... I'm so scared. Oh. But now we also know that Fox does have the, 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 the other Marvel properties back. Yeah. The only property I don't think they own right now is Spider-Man, which that's not a problem because they're sharing it. Yeah. Um, they've also hinted at uh, Submariner, and I think they said he could oh, possibly show up. Speaking in this, Black this, Panther too. this reminds me of something, uh, which kind of I hate to say this, I hate to keep harping on Captain Marvel like this, but it really just proves the fact that they don't know what to do with her. Uh, there comes a scene in the movie where they're they're talking about these uh, earthquakes happening underwater. That was to nod to Submariner. In theory, but then they say that's happening all over the galaxy on other planets. And it's never touched upon. It's never brought back up. And it's only used in the movie is to explain why Captain Marvel isn't there. I thought she was saying, like, they were dealing with half the planet being on. I thought the earthquake thing was the other girl, and that was uh, the T'Challa's sidekick. Yeah, I, I forget her name. I, as Michonne, I. Michonne from The Walking Dead, without Who a wig. Is way more badass in these movies than she ever was in The Walking Dead. I'm sorry, but. I don't know. Michonne's pretty badass in The Walking Dead. She's a better actor and proves it in these movies, I would say, because... She's a fantastic actress all the way around. No, 100%. Um, uh, but yeah, there's there's a throwaway line that Captain Marvel makes where she says it's happening all over the all over the place on other planets. I'm going to have to go back and check that. And I, 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 I thought I'm she was... Almost po if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm almost positive that it is... It is one throwaway line just so they can say, yeah, Captain Marvel's not going to be here. Bye! I thought, I'm pretty sure it was, they were just talking about half the universe being gone. They were dealing with that on other, all the other planets, too. I'm pretty sure the earthquake thing was uh, to talk, to give a nod to Submariner coming. But then they never do anything with it. 
Yeah, because that's going to be another movie. Maybe. We don't know. That's definitely preparing for the Submariner. We don't know. But there's talks. But long story short, uh, everything got set back to the way it was before, pretty much. Except for, like, one or two people are permadead because of their uh, contract. Which, again, Black this, this Widow, kind of... Iron Man, and... Captain America. Uh, this... Well, Captain America's not dead, but... Well, Steve Rogers Vision. is no longer going to be in these movies. Uh, Vision. And it really... Again, this would have felt like a better send-off if, like, in the back of my head, I didn't understand that this was not done because this is a proper story beat for them to leave. It's more because their contracts are uh, finished and Disney doesn't want to keep paying Robert Downey Jr. half a billion dollars to be in their movies. Oh, I think some of his, some of the movies was uh, straight billion. Well, whatever. Uh, there, I, I can just see uh, at the funeral scene a whole bunch of uh, Disney accountants crying, just thinking, we're going to save so much money now. <laughs> they dot their eyes with hundred dollar bills. <laughs> so much money in pockets now. We have this like this. We can just have him. We can just roll those credits in there. <laughs> God, how much money they make off of this fucking shit? They're they're just making that much more. <laughs> Yeah, because you don't have to pay any other actor Robert Downey Jr. money because they're not Robert Downey Jr. There you go. They didn't kickstart this whole fucking uh, endless cacophony. Oh, God. I'm I'm so glad that we're done for a while. Like, from what I've heard after Home Homecoming... From Home's in, like, two af months. After Homecoming, though, from what I know, they're taking a break from a lot of these for a while. Far from Home? Far from Home. Whatever. Uh, coming was the first one. Yeah, whatever. From what I understand, they're they're putting the brakes on it for a little bit, and hopefully, we're not gonna see a new superhero movie come out every single year. Sometimes twice a year. No, that's or three times a year no, in this case. And I'm just like, I just fucking stop. No, that that's definitely gonna happen. There's definitely gonna be. I that. I hope I hope they don't. I hope they slow down or like, all right, we got we got to start reprepping. We got we're at least gonna get take one a year. What we've got, I I would accept a year. I would accept the entirety of twenty twenty. No Marvel superhero movies. I don't think that's gonna happen. But I <laughs> unless they want to refocus their Disney, but Disney, it's Disney. They have so much to work with now, especially now that. They have everything. It can all be generic and terrible. You can't do much worse than Fan Four Sticks, though. It can all be generic and awful. You can't do worse than Fan Four. We don't have to try for Fantastic Four. It'll be better than whatever fucking bullshit they shoveled out since Roger Corman <laughs> made a movie. Just by default. Somehow that is the best fantastic out of all. It's, oh God. And you have to go watch the bootleg online. Yeah. <laughs> you can find it on YouTube. But those are our thoughts on uh, Avengers Endgame. I don't think I have anything else. I think we actually covered all the things that I wanted to talk about with this movie. Yeah, this is going to be a really long video. <laughs> it is, but that's okay, because I, my butt was numb after three hours of fucking sitting in this theater. Again, I, I strongly think that you could have cut probably about 30 minutes out of this movie, just tightened up a little bit around the corners. Thank and... God there weren't any end credit scenes. I oh, don't know about Oh, Jesus. I don't know about you, but my person came in the theater and be like, there's no after credit scene you can They know. told me at the desk when I bought my ticket. Okay. I, I looked at the man and I was like, awesome. Thank you. When I walked into the theater, I was like, I get to leave when the credits start rolling. That's uh, Well, there was a noise at the end of the movie, which I didn't stick around to watch, but it's uh, the hammer. It's three bangs of a hammer, and it's from the first Iron Man movie where it's forging the first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah, and it's also to show the ending of Phase 3. 
And with that, we're done. Yep. We don't have to talk about Marvel movies for, for two uh, months. Two months. Yay! <laughs> hey, I want to put a gun in my mouth. <laughs> Don't worry, if we have Far From Home. And, and then we've got Star Wars. And then we have Brightburn. Oh, talk about God. Brightburn. I'm so rude. You ready to talk about Brightburn? No. I just, I uh, know. I'm so sick of superheroes. I'm so sick of Star Wars. Have you seen the new Hellboy yet? I have not. I heard it was terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just so tired. I, Sean's tired, ladies and gentlemen. It, it says something when I'm more looking forward to the Godzilla movie. The, <laughs> that and it's just because that's not a, a super worn down IP that they put out a movie every single year for the past decade. I'm just hoping for a surprise entrance by Jet Jaguar. <laughs> every You're time. You're not gonna get it. Why won't you let me have the show? It's not me that won't. It's Hollywood. Hollywood, give me Jet Jet Well, that's going to be it from us uh, for now, guys. What did you think if you saw this movie? If not, did you stick around? If so, why? Because they probably told you. you that we we told you we told you to go fuck off and see the movie. I know every I know every employee at movie theaters because I used to work at one. They are all they are telling people do do not stay, go home. Yeah, <laughs> don't stay after the uh, once the credits start rolling. Just just get out. Clean up after yourselves in the theater. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Don't pick up your day. popcorn. Pick up your drink cups. Throw them away. I knew a girl who works at uh, the AMC in Little Rock. They ran for 24 hours this weekend. I am so sorry. for the, I feel so bad for them. Yeah, I do too. I was almost the manager of that theater. I feel terrible for them. Well, that's going to be it from us, everybody. All we'll right, see you guys. back here next time. If you liked what you saw, leave a like and uh, think about giving a subscription. Uh, we do these every now and again, whenever we get the chance. Uh, unfortunately, it mostly centers around these big tentpole franchise movies that I'm totally burnt out on. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully we'll get a nice little uh, small label to come out, and it'll be a lot of fun. I keep trying to get you to watch Older Man, so. I've been meaning to. We'll see you next time, everybody. Right. Laters. Later.